Just watch this portion of the speech. A free Iraq will counter the destructive ambitions of Iran. A free Iraq will marginalize extremists, unleash the talent of its people, and be an anchor of stability in the region. A free Iraq will set an example for people across the Middle East. George, I don't know anyone who still believes those goals are possible. I know one. <laughs> the fact is that we are succeeding. We are succeeding in a new tactic, and that is succeeding. Mm -hmm. We are succeeding. It is now succeeding. We can succeed. Mm -hmm. We are succeeding with this strategy, and that's the opinion of most observers. I don't know who else believes that we are going to make a shimmering model in Iraq that will be a cause of emulation. You continue to progress and bring a free and open and democratic society. We have a free Iraq. I mean, the president keeps telling us that they had election after election in Iraq. And the consequences of it are that religious theocrats have taken power, that instability reigns in much of the country, that you have destabilized the region with two million refugees, and that Iran has been strengthened. So the odd thing is that it is the free Iraq, or at least his version of the free Iraq, that has caused all the problems. To promise the Iraqis that next summer we're going to have 130,000 plus troops there, which is exactly where we were a year ago, when the country almost fell apart, is not to change the fundamental equation. To somehow assert that we've been pursuing exactly the same uh, uh, tactic uh, is simply not in keeping with what we have been doing on the ground. The fact is we have changed that strategy. The can was kicked down the road for six more months. Uh, now we're going to wait for another report. You to are asking to go back to a failed strategy that had failed for nearly four years, go back to the previous failed strategy, which some Democrats want to do, to go back to the same failed strategy of before. We're not saying just change the mission. We're saying use American leverage, work with our allies, work with the neighbors with a real diplomatic surge that brings the United Nations back and in effect creates a structure where it's not just American treasure and American lives that are on the line. The president the other day talked about 36 allies. I'll lay odds John McCain can't name 36 allies. I can't. You know what John is advocating is to go back to the failed tactic of before. Although the administration has said repeatedly that security improvements will create breathing space for Iraqi sectarian and political forces to move towards national reconciliation, the Jones Commission turns that equation on its head, saying that long-term security advances are impossible without political progress. Despite all that remains to be done on the military front, the Jones Commission says, quote, the single most important event that could immediately and favorably affect Iraq's direction and security is political reconciliation. Sustained progress within the Iraqi security forces depends on such an agreement. So the president's oh. strategy has been... Now, wait a minute. First of all, that's a Washington Post story, interpretation of General Jones' report. He was on this uh, program yeah. last week and acknowledged yes. that's exactly... And he acknowledged exactly that, and he also acknowledged that without the, the military security situation, it was also impossible for but, the political but, situation But what he said was that the, the current... And he also Let said me just finish, because he said the current administration thinking is that you cannot have political reconciliation without first having security. He says it's the opposite, that you cannot have security say it's unless opposite. you have political reconciliation. Tim, Un I've known Jim Jones for 30 years. It's not what he's saying. The president has been saying, we need to have security on the ground before we can have political reconciliation. And you're saying, your commission, no, no, no. You need to have political reconciliation. You need to have the Shiites and the Sunnis to put their guns down, put their arms down, and come together as a country before we could ever possibly secure the nation. Fair? Fair. Uh, our report started out with that assertion, and it closed with that assertion. That, that, is, uh, that is the uh, most important thing. We think the reconciliation is absolutely the key to uh, measurable and rapid progress. Any counterinsurgency expert will tell you that you have to have a military security environment on the ground and then the other aspects of it move forward. What happened in Ambar was a political decision first. The political leaders said, we're going to fight Al-Qaeda, and then they joined with the Americans.
When you talk about Al Anbar, and it's one of the things I watched the president, he's done this for months, they can't say Al Anbar was because of the surge. They really can't. It might have helped, yeah. but that started last year. Yeah. You saw it on the ground, I saw it on the ground. We yeah. started talking to the Sunnis. Right. So and it was the, politics that produced military victory and the on local, the ground. In Anbar province, by the way, I asked General Petraeus. He said the reason why we had the success in Anbar province is we had the extra 4,000 Marines to send there. It's astonishing the number of things that people come up with, but one of the latest uh, statements is that the surge had nothing to do with Anbar province and the rather stunning success we've had there. How do you respond to that? Well, the success in Anbar province uh, correctly is a political success. The tribes indeed stood up, uh, started outside Ramadi last October or so, uh, Colonel McFarland, the Army, with some great Marine forces and Army forces in uh, Ramadi, uh, made the decision to back him. That began to build some momentum, got some Iraqis trained, and all of a sudden, by mid-March, uh, they felt that they could go ahead and launch a clearing operation. Could it have happened without in, the surge? Ramadi. Uh, it would not have happened as quickly without the surge. I think John and others have a fundamental misunderstanding of the relationship of al-Qaeda to Iraq. The Shia will never allow al-Qaeda to take over Iraq. The Kurds will never allow al-Qaeda to take over Iraq. That's 80 to 85 percent of the country. And the Sunni in Anbar have now decided they don't want al-Qaeda. We are the attraction for al-Qaeda. And if we begin to reduce our footprint, then al-Qaeda, believe me, will be driven out by the Iraqis themselves. General Petraeus has said, and I take his word for it, that Iraq is now the central front in the war against al-Qaeda. I read and listened to the testimony of John McCain questioning General Petraeus. And John McCain, oh, asked, him about, uh, John McCain asked him about being the central front. And he said, how do you know it's the central front? And he said, because I talked to the head of the national intelligence and another general, and they tell me al-Qaeda says it is their central front. Surely you don't believe that General Petraeus reaches his conclusions by talking to somebody. I'm quoting he lives what General and Petraeus works there. said. Gen oh, please. I'm quoting General what he Petraeus, said to you, General. General. You are quoting him incorrectly. No, I'm quoting him absolutely correctly. General Petraeus, you have uh, stated that Iraq is now the central front on the war on terror. Is that a correct quote? Uh, that is correct, sir. Why is that? Uh, it is based on my conversations with uh, the director of CIA and uh, Lieutenant General McChrystal, uh, the Joint Special Operations Command commander, who have assessed that it is the central front for Al Qaeda, uh, and they have based that on communications and, and other things. Iraqi and American soldiers and Marines are fighting together in neighborhoods in Baghdad and Anbar and other places and we are proud of the work that the Iraqi military is doing and they're getting better every day and I think it's wrong to denigrate the sacrifices that Iraqi soldiers are making right now Nobody on behalf of their country. That you're saying they're ineffective. General Petraeus, we agree that uh, the police or the national police have been a colossal failure. What are we going to do about it? John, and have training bases, you're, you're and they with will have. Because and they we, will. No, I'm, yes, you are.